with Crazy Mickey's Evil Grin in the reflection of the screen. It's only appropriate that we run a test in progress on heat from the top, the night court top. Currently at the 200 rating, actually that went down to 1, so let's ramp it back up to 200. We're on the 200 rating, we'll leave it on and go ahead and uh, start the proverbial countdown and see about uh, running time compared to heat from the reflector and the, the bezel area of the body of the light. So we'll, we'll leave this on for Crazy Mickey and check back later. Coming back from the glow on Crazy Mickey's face and currently just at about the one hour one minute mark of the constant run at 200 lumens of the night core tub. The body, the aluminum body of the tub is warm, mildly warm, up near the bezel, even, well, at least almost less so. And on the face of the lens, as you can see, I'm, I'm touching that with my index finger, and it uh, is, is just mildly warm, very mildly warm. And checking the rating again, this is currently at the, still at the 200 lumen setting. Let's see if this will cycle back off. Yep, there we go, 200 lumen. So, continuing to run, and we will let that go, or continue, I should say. Currently at the, hmm, let's see, 2 hour 13 minute mark with the TUP still at the 200, oh, sorry, flash back to 1 there, 200 lumen. If you touch that settings uh, bar before or button before it goes to black, it will go to the next setting. So now it's gone to black. If you touch it, it'll give you the current setting. That's just a little heads up. You have to wait for it to go dark before touching it again to see what the current setting is. Otherwise, there we are at 200, but if you touch it again, now it goes down to 1 lumen. So just as a little bit of a heads up, you have to wait for it to go to dark. And still focused on Crazy Mickey with his dance moves, his rock out moves. And then we're over two hours. The... The body, the aluminum body of the tup, is just simply warm. Very a light warm to the touch. The lens, as you can see, is negligible. It's warm, but actually the body is a little warmer than the lens for some reason. Uh, maybe because of the thickness of that lens that we talked about earlier. So there we go. Two hours and running. And uh, I think we're at about the three hour mark is when we start to lose our uh, lumen setting on the top two hours 15 minutes still running strong at approximately 200 lumens and again body of the flashlight not uh, excessive to hold or touch the night core tub has been in field test in progress or tip for some time now multiple full charges multiple full discharges and some partial discharges and at this point we're going to go ahead and just run the the screen there we've got at 4.2 volts it means we're at full charge or just about there and we're going to do some beam shots here in the field we have a approximately 30 feet or 10 meter wide sorry, that's a stroke right there. about a 30 foot wide roadway here with some additional distance that we've got back in focus kind of in and out of focus some additional distance off into that direction. So a nice open field and a somewhat blustery day, blustery evening with the wind. So, so with the top, I'm going to start it off on its first mode. It's one lens and it's tilted down just a bit. As you can see, we've got uh, it's visible to the naked eye, and you can see that the beam is cast. Then we're going to ramp it up to the 15 lumen, rather, cast out to that cord, 
you've got good area light illumination. There's not a lot of throw to this little bulb, to this little LED. I'm going to ramp it up now to 65 lumen, and that uh, small bush that's there in the immediate distance, right up with this other night core flashlight so that we've got better focus. That is completely illuminated, and by the naked eye, you can tell, you can even make out the yellow buds of the preliminary flowers that are budding on that bush. Ramping it up now to the 200 lumen power, and even though we do have some backlighting there, you can see that that bush and the curb, the asphalt directly in front of it is all clearly visible. And going into turbo mode, that area is completely, completely lit, and it's even throwing a really strong shadow behind that flower. Let's move over here to the left just a bit. That's casting, obviously, at 30 meters, 3 meters and 30 feet. That was completely illuminated at approximately triple, almost quadruple that distance. On the far side there, getting complete illumination of the area as well. Begins to disperse actually, in this open field. Just a bit, a little bit of dust in here, so we've got some dispersal. But that area at uh, good, almost uh, 50 yards is completely illuminated. It appears to be a fire hydrant and some other details, even though this is a very small area, and that's also in small. I'm going to compare that to the, to the, uh, the stroke, to the, uh, the turbo mode, S, and going into stroke, there's a lot more throw to the uh, 45S, but the, uh, the, the tub is, you know, fighting on its own there. It's, it's not quite as much spot throw. It's definitely got some area lighting going on. So, you know, that automatically ramps back to the 200 on the boat and bring it back down to off. We're at 200, now we're at 1 lumen. Bring it up to 200 lumen again. So now, one of the features of the top, and by comparison, again, this was the the uh, Nightcore EA45S. It's a four, uh, a four battery AA uh, powered light. So four regular alkaline batteries were powering that light in comparison to the rechargeable internal light of the top. Now we're at 200 lumens. I'll bring this out here just a bit. And we're gonna pan this down so that uh, the top is supposedly rated at one meter. Asphalt. We have some concrete here as well. So with an asphalt surface, about three meters, or rather one meter, which is about three feet, or just about a waist height, where you can carry this light, holding it and walking it, and clip to you. I'm going to drop test this and see if it works. Now let's drop one at one meter. It's on. Here we are at one meter again. Dropping that light, it fell a little bit on the bezel area, and we're going to go for. I'm going to drop this lens down. It's a third drop, and the, the tub seems to be holding up very well on its own. We'll drop it. Attempt to drop the tail first. Again, it's holding up quite well. I'm going to bring this up to uh, approximately two meters or six feet high. Dropping it uh, once again from, from that height, about six feet tall from asphalt. Drop one at approximately six feet or two meters. Two. And 
three drops on asphalt. Just to compare it to concrete. around Tut has held up admirably and continuing to function powering it off we'll bring up the Okay, very well. The top is at 200, meter, 200 lumen here, back down to 1 lumen, 15 lumen, 65 lumen, and turbo board. All the functions So there you go, top holds up to a 2 meter, multiple 2 meter. The venerable little night court tup has undergone several fuel testing uh, applications, including uh, the most recent drop testing, and uh, it still holds up. Still holds up phenomenally well. Um, the damage sustained from the drop testing is some uh, damage to the aluminum body here, some additional scratches and dings on the uh, edges roundabout, so to speak. And I'll just let those, for the most part, speak for themselves. The uh, light, again, continues to function as it did coming straight out of the box. So I would venture to, to even uh, go as far as to say it, it uh, underwent testing at uh, a greater altitude, if you will, than the one meter rating that was uh, on the packaging. 1 meter rating right about there. Now, in reference to this IP54, uh, additional research indicates that that is uh, an ingress protection rating. And with the IP54 on the top, uh, the first number uh, in the 5 is in reference to solids. And 5 is a protection against uh, limited dust ingress. The 4 of the 54 is a protection from water spray from any direction. So this is not rated by the factory as a submersion or immersion of 54 or any reference to immersion whatsoever. Strictly water spray. So with that in mind, we have a little <laughs> something that, uh, that we're going to to partake in. This is going to be uh, a depth of no more than uh, approximately, uh, let's see, it's just a few inches. So no the water depth on this is actually just right at two inches or at uh, just a, a little under five centimeters. So with that in mind, we're going to turn this on in the uh, 15 setting, not the lowest of the settings, but at the 15 setting, so that we'll still be able to see a pretty good glow and should have some some relatively good uh, uh, run time on this. Actually, I think what we're going to do is just because the next stage of this will be running this to uh, a, a more extended period of time. So we're at the one lumen rating. You can still see that it's on and we're going to immerse this in water. Well, I think it's safe to say that the TUP is not immersion rated whatsoever. The, uh, well, I take it back. <laughs> it's on. So we're going to immerse this. And that's my mistake. I saw the, the, um, I saw the screen go dark on the timer. But as you can see, the TUP is definitely still uh, emitting light. 
and let's go as far as to maybe tilt this up a bit. And as you can see, it's still emitting light. So we've got an immersion completely in water. It is uh, approximately at least a half of an inch. The very top of the tup light is about half of an inch from the very surface of this uh, of the water itself. And I'm going to run this for I don't know. Let's say at least somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, approximately uh, 30 minutes. So I'm running the time now and as you can see uh, it's actually been in there for longer than I started the the uh, stopwatch. We are now a bit past the 30 minute mark and as is somewhat readily visible you can see bubbles on the side of the tub, on the inside of the water container as well. Again, we are clearly beyond the 30 minute mark and running. The tub continues to function. The light continues to be on and even bringing it out of the water and re-immersing it does not seem to have any ready effect at this point. Now, with that in mind, we'll go ahead and prepare for the very next segment. The tup will now go into its more strenuous, <laughs> strenuous immersion test, uh, probably, possibly going to be the final stage of the immersion test, in the freezer. And again, still on and hopefully we will see just how well this holds up uh, freezer alarm going off there and we will see just how well it does actually hold up so there we go we are now at and actually past well past the 12 hour mark on the uh, test in progress of the night core tub just opened the freezer compartment and it's somewhat evident that the TUP display light is on and seems to be flashing. We're going to take a little closer look at this and bringing it out it does look like we have solid a solid freeze of water and again the display seems to be flashing on and off and we'll uh, let this thaw out again completely frozen through all the way to the bottom as we know ice freezes from the top down or water freezes from the top down and checking the tub here in just a bit now that we have the tub out of the freezer and ready for a little closer inspection while it's still in the block of ice and of course while we uh, get ready to compress with some espresso It uh, seems only appropriate to get a close-up of this. The display, as you can see, is either solid or it has a bit of a... I'm trying to think of what term to call that. There's a, a, like a, a minute strobe effect to the display. And the display seems to be altering uh, between some settings that I can quite frankly not make out. And I don't think that we will. Well, maybe we will. A little magic rub there. No, not not really able to make out exactly what that display is. Um, it seems to be cycling through the amperage, and I can't tell. There's some zeros in there, so uh, it, it's going through the uh, battery power, and and it's doing the indication similar to when it's charging. Um, where the battery goes through its cycles. You know, it's, it's kind of strobing through its cycle. So, uh, with that said, we'll, again, with that said, we can tell that it is solid. Rubbing some of the section there off. In any event, we'll let this thaw. And, of course, I guess one of the more important aspects also would be to determine if, in fact, we can see any light emitting from 
from the LED itself and I cannot tell. It's a, a, the ice is a bit foggy directly in front of the lens and and I cannot tell if that's the case. Interestingly enough, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's a bit of a like a burst <laughs> that's evident in front of this this here is in front of the the uh, lens itself and there's an effect in the ice that looks like a, a bit of a burst. And I don't know how clear that is, but you can you can see it. It's like a like a whole section directly in front of the lens. There we go. That's a little more evident. That's an interesting effect. Um, I wonder if that is from the minor amount of heat that might have been coming from the lens itself. Or well, we'll find out when we uh, when we thaw this and see what uh, see what's going on with the top. Stand by. Okay, going to interrupt our standby mode uh, because I just made a, a more specific observation on that on that uh, display setting. What we're getting is uh, it's alternating between different different uh, different displays and trying to get this to focus in so possibly we can get a good read on it. One of the displays right there is the lockout 2 setting. So the TUP appears to have probably because of the pressure of, you know, when the when the water is going into into when it's beginning to freeze, it will create pressure in there because of course the water is freezing from the top down, which is going to create some pressure on the body of the light, which is one of the reasons for this test. Um, not only that, but also temperature variation. I'm going to imagine that the pressure placed, pressure on, on the rubberized buttons, uh, the control settings of the TUP, and in some way, shape, or form put it into lockout too. Either that or that's some type of a safe override mechanism built into the light. Um, but yeah, that, that uh, setting there was lockout too, and then it continues to cycle through the battery power indication and yeah lockout two and uh, something else that I can't quite make out so it is in lockout two at this point and be interesting to see what happens once we get this thought out so again uh, clear to stand by now the tup the night court tup has been <laughs> de uh, de icing you might say uh, for a number of hours and there is still just the remnants of the block of ice that the tup had sat in floating on the very top of it. Uh, it does not appear to be connected to the flashlight body anymore and it appears that the um, display reading is still fluctuating between different cycles. So <clears throat> let's uh, remove this and being somewhat ginger with it, let the water drip off as you can see. Not touching any of the control buttons whatsoever just yet. It's still indicating that it is in the lockout, well, lockout one is what I just saw. Getting an interesting reading. Uh, a number of sequences, looks like it's showing, uh, well, yeah, some very interesting um, displays. Let's see if we can get this to not drip too much. I don't know if that's an indication that there was uh, an entrance or an invasion of water to the to the body of the tub. We will take a little closer look here. The recharge plug seems to be in proper place. Of course the body of the light is still quite cold because it just came out of a block of ice or floating in ice water. The LED does not appear to be lit. It is in lockout one just now and I, th you know, I believe for it to go into lockout the, the light has to be off if, um, if the uh, user interface uh, if I recall the interface, user interface properly. 
so the display is a little off center. It's a, it's reading a little high on the on the screen itself. Cycling through there it is lockout one and lockout two. So then it goes through the key sequence. I'm going to let this dry off at least the the body of the light dry off significantly. And again, we're just down to the very very small amount of ice on the block of this very cold water. And we'll uh, let it dry and come back in just a bit. The tub has come up to what appears to be close to room temperature. And <clears throat> the display has changed once again just a bit with, let's see if we can get this to focus properly. There we go. The display is blank now, but it uh, intermittently comes on. And uh, there we go. <clears throat> Without any application of buttons, it uh, just came on. And it's reading just basically a, a scramble across uh, the screen itself. The screen also appears to have a bit of condensation in this area here. Uh, and also appears to have moisture condensation inside the, uh, the reflector area behind the lens. Uh, a bit of moisture appears to be there and uh, other than that and the the damage from the drop testing um, appears to be otherwise uh, intact. I don't notice anything obvious around the, the seams of the, the body of the light itself, but again, I'm not sure if there's an O-ring in there or not. And again, there's a bit of that moisture inside the, the reflector area where the LED bulb is itself. Now this is continuing to cycle with that, that scramble effect across the screen. I have not attempted to adjust buttons or uh, employ power for the light itself. And it does not appear that the LED is on at this time. The cover for the micro uh, USB charging port has not been uh, removed in any way. And again, in the event that there might be some additional moisture there. I'm going to attempt to deploy the power button to see what occurs. And actually, it was last in lockout one and two. So we need to deploy power and then hold. See if this cycles on. Unbelievable, the light actually, well, it cycled through the lockout one and two and is on. <clears throat> I don't know what uh, light level that is. That's probably at the one lumen level. Uh, I'm, I'm impressed. It still, it still comes on even though I do, you know, we cannot see what the reading is on the display. And again, that does appear to be moisture there. So very impressed. Light is still on. I'm going to try to cycle up. I imagine that this is at the one lumen rating. So one press of the settings button. Actually, yeah, that brought that up to turbo. That's right up into turbo mode. I'm going to press the power button once again, see if we can bring this off. The LED is off. Let's press it on again. And once again, we're back on and going up to turbo. So this does not appear, oh, there we go. We've gone up a bit. It is, appears to be cycling through its different settings and then back to one lumen. So, wow, we're going to run this uh, and see what happens and changes possibly with the, the uh, settings button on this and kind of go from there. Very good. Since this brave little night core tup has decided to uh, continue to continue to attempt to function and is doing so quite admirably, I think it only appropriate for us to attempt to remove the moisture condensation from the interior by utilization of some good old fashioned rice immersion. So this will be uh, our attempt to uh, revitalize and remove moisture content from the, the uh, night core tub. And I'm just going to press this down in so it's nicely bedded, putting it to bed to take a nice nap, a nice rice nap, you might say. And we'll seal the container as would be normal protocol for such an endeavor. And hopefully, we'll see if we can remove that um, condensation issue. 
Well now, it's just about time to see what we've been able to accomplish with the uh, rice, the dry, the dry rice dry out of the Nightcore Tup. It's been encased in this uh, container sealed with uh, white rice for uh, some time and uh, might as well go ahead and get started with a beverage for this uh, opportunity to see whether or not we will in fact have uh, any success in drying out the moisture that had uh, accumulated within the uh, within the night court tub. And for that, a little titanium beverage container with some ice and nothing like a little bit of balls. <laughs> nothing like having balls when you got to do this kind of high tech uh, test in progress, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Like that makes any sense whatsoever. So. Salute. Hopefully we will... This is not an alcoholic beverage. It is a energy beverage. It's been a little while since I've had one. Uh, Guara, Warna, whatever. Um, be an opportunity to see if, in fact, we were able to remove the moisture that had accumulated within the tub. As you can see, it's buried very nicely in the rice. And just the initial appearance seems to be that of, oh, I've got some rice coming out of the bottom of where the uh, clip is. <clears throat> there we go. A little bit of rice dust here. And as you can see, the screen, the display screen does not have any obvious moisture inside. Let's see if we can get a better... I don't see any moisture. Like you could see the moisture before and I don't see that. As far as the the reflector, you know, as is, it's a, obviously a deep uh, uh, alternative type of a reflector, but the interior of the light behind the lens does not appear to have any moisture at this time, which is that's uh, that's well the rice uh, the rice treatment seems to work for those of you who have used it for drying out electronics in the past. You probably know the same. Sometimes it's a hit and miss. Now that said, the the technique of immersing the tub in water is not to be uh, addressed or duplicated by any just regular purchaser because it's not going to be covered by warranty. This was done by us at Gear Challenge with the intent to determine if in fact the seal, that the body of the flashlight would be able to resist moisture more than as the the rating that it does have of a, uh, 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 what is it, IP54, which is merely water spray from any direction. So the rating for this from the factory is not to be immersed in water or submerged in, in, in water in any way, shape, or form. Therefore, obviously, if you were to do that on purpose on your own, it's not, I'm sure it's not going to be covered by warranty, and I have no intention to submit this for warranty purposes because, of course, our objective is to determine what this little guy can handle. Now, after being dried out, as you remember, uh, when it was removed from the <laughs> from the little mini glacier, the uh, tup continued to perform. I believe it skipped the 65 lumen level. So I'm going to depress the power button, and we are we're on. This is about that one lumen rating, and the display does not give us an actual display. The display merely shows us. I'm trying to get this into focus again. My apologies. Here we go. It just shows a couple of bars, which is similar to the the uh, lockout unlock feature, where it shows something like a key symbol and then scrolling until it opens up. Now we're on that one lumen level. Just powered it off. Coming back up to that, yeah, you know, that's about the one lumen level. We'll press the cycle button. Definitely up, although nothing displaying as far as the actual reading, uh, which I if memory recalls. Uh, should be 15. Press leveling up again, goes to nothing. That should be the 65 rating. 
Now we are what would normally be the 200 rating and again nothing displayed on this screen. I'm going to cycle back. We're in the off position. That would be definitely not the probably the 200 rating. Cycling back down probably to 1, 15, 65 goes blank. So we have inadvertently, well not inadvertently, we have uh, disabled the 65 lumen level probably because of that immersion test. And then cycling one more time gives us nothing. Cycling again brings us up to what appears to be that 200 level. And then back down to 1. 1, 15, should be 65 with nothing. 200 seems to be appropriate. And then pressing on the, the uh, activation button, the settings button, brings us up to turbo, which should be 1,000 lumen. Okay, very interesting. Again, that 200 level, back to 1, 15, 65 is nothing. We don't have any, I don't see any light emitting whatsoever, and nothing unusual, well, nothing actually displayed on the screen. So, that said, this TUP will, uh, in spite of its uh, uh, dings, nicks, and scars, will, uh, uh, will continue to ride with me in an everyday carry capacity. I don't really like using that term very much, but not every day, but frequently it'll be carried in the pocket. On an additional uh, observation, being carried in the pocket with the clip out and the flashlight actually in a front pocket, I had noticed that I was not inadvertently activating the light by it being pressed and being cycled in any way. Uh, I believe that I had placed this light into lockout number one level uh, by being in the pocket. So probably, you know, one of these sequences had been selected inadvertently just by movement. So uh, just, I have one episode that I believe something was activated with the light just by merely riding in the pocket and body movement, sitting down, standing up, walking, what have you. So that's it for right now. And um, now that I've got the light on, it does appear that there may be still some moisture inside the, the reflector area. So this light will go back into the rice treatment, if you will. And we're going to let it ride in the rice treatment for an additional extended period of time, maybe an additional 24 hours, to see uh, if, in fact, we can remove that additional moisture that, uh, that I may have either overlooked or that may have uh, returned from other, some other area inside the light. So there we go.